right, so we're down at the Harrop Performance Center in WA here. I've just come to get this thing strapped up and back on the dyno. Of course, what we've done is that crank pulley and also the new heads. So it's time for just a bit of a tweak. It's not a full retune like Al did the last tune and that's done quite a good job. It's really just to make little adjustments for the modifications that I've made, give it a power run, see if there's actually any difference from the stuff that I've done. And um, there we can get out there, get towing, get traveling and start enjoying this thing. I want to try and fix the, the fact, you know how it was shooting flames and stuff before, I want to try and sort that out as well. So we'll get her strapped up and see what she pulls. so-called cameraman's just run off for a second so I'll try and hold this thing myself but pretty much look what we've done we've done the crank pulley so that's down now to a larger crank pulley and then the new heads which isn't going to make a massive amount of difference but it should help the flow and things in that regard so it's more a curiosity thing about what's going to happen here we'll do a power run and see if there's actually any difference but really it's just tweaking it for towing and things like that I'm going to try and get that economy a bit better and um, the flames that was an issue, let's be honest, it shouldn't have been doing that. So we'll hopefully sort that out as well. From the last episode, we're actually finished off putting this thing back together. You may have seen, there's a little competition going in the comments about sort of predicting what power it's gonna put out. This is probably seven or 800 in there. So we'll see what it does today and I'll try and see if anyone's got that exact number. But if I missed it, I'm sorry. Hopefully we can uh, find the closest guy and you can win that merch pack. So same as last time, we need to actually take the big mud tires off just to slow that road speed down. It's a bit safer on the dyno and the big knobblies aren't very like suited for this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna whack the street tires back on the back there, get this thing spun up. Another thing I may experiment with is this air box because I've got quite a small air box and look, let's give it away. I'm gonna be doing a second snorkel. So I've got twin snorkels coming, which means there's gonna be a lot more airflow coming in. So to simulate that, I wanna take the cover off this air box so just so it can breathe a bit better, which is what's gonna be happening in the future when I get that second one hooked up as well. So we've got no restrictions there with horsepower and um, really see, let this thing breathe and see what it can do. I've also added a cash can as well. So that's just something I did last week and I threw on there. A couple of events coming out of the crankcase there just because I think it was trying to recirculate a lot of that oil blow by back into the intake. So to try and clean things up, I've got that cash can on there now to really capture that oil. Similar thing that gets done on a lot of diesels. So that's on there now as well. Should clean that up. And as well as breathing with these new snorkels and intakes, should be mint. Okay, so the first sort of pull has been done. It looks like not a lot needs to be changed. A few little tweaks here and there, but the actual air fuel ratio the whole way through is quite good. Gained a little bit of power. It's reading about 456, I think that one was. So a little bit up there, another 20, 25 horsepower from the last tune, but you never know for certain with these. Dynos are different and things like that, but it is definitely some sort of increase. We'll give it another proper power run now and I'll turn all the cameras on. And then I want to do a second one with that air box cover on. So. Some people have been sort of speculating that's restricting airflow, things like that. So I want to try and bust that myth and see if it actually affects the power by putting that air box on with the lid on. But at the moment it's off just so it can breathe how it wants to. So we'll have a look at that next. So after reviewing the footage of the second run, I could clearly see where the problem lied here. I thought this might be an issue. I was having massive belt slip at about 5,500 RPM before the peak power and it was jumping off the runner as well. Take a look. So we decided not to push any harder with the way the belt was behaving, but now it was time to chuck that cover on the airbox and see what difference it would make to the thing. This surprised me a bit.
Okay, I'm going to see if I can explain this as best I can on paper. So I've got the dyno graphs here. Now looking at the lid open. So this was the first run where we had the full power and the coming in. We got the 456 horsepower on the top. So that was a peak power. Now this is what surprised me when I put the airbox and filter back in place. It actually only had a peak power of 396. Like that is a massive difference. And if we look at the curve the whole way, we actually got quite a decent increase the whole way through. So that's quite curious. There's a lot of guys out there who actually sort of try and predict what's going to happen with the airflow, whether the airbox is big enough. And to be honest, mine is quite small. That's why I've gone for that second snorkel coming up as well. Um, I'll see if I can see the torque graph as well. It's a bit more squiggly because it had some issues with the slip, of course, but a lot lower RPM here. But still, with the lid open, you get a lot more torque at the top end. So that was about, I think it was 870-ish Newton meters. And then as soon as that lid and filter goes back on, it just drops right down to about the 800 mark. So there you go. You need more air and then you get more power. The final run we did was a towing simulation. So I got the RPM set to what the speed would be on the highway. It was about 25, 2600 RPM. Just to check under load so if I'm towing, it's not gonna be pinging and leaning out, but also making sure the economy is as good as it can be. All right guys, so there's a few pulls and different runs we've done. Quite interesting actually, we played around a bit with that airbox, so we ended up doing one without the cover on. We ended up taking the whole pod filter off itself and then put the lid back on and it did make a massive amount of difference. I'll put some numbers up on the screen there to show the differences between that, but overall the peak horsepower was about 456, I think it was, which is 25 extra horsepower, but that power was sitting at about 5,200 RPM. And if I can recall from the last tune I had, the peak power was a bit later in the rev range and it's because of slippage. So I'm actually having belt slippage at the moment, which I thought might have been an issue because I've still got the small 6PK belt on there and having that larger crank pulley, everything's under a lot more load and it was ended up throwing the belt off the ribs a couple of times as well. So I'm not getting a true horsepower reading until I can get that belt sorted out to hang on to that blower. Um, torque though, torque was really good on the bottom end there. It actually got, I think the max was about 850 Newton meters. So that was well, 875 actually, something around there. So we're between 850 and 875, I'll put it on the screen, which was an awesome increase as well on the torque. And there's actually some interesting things with the curve, not peaks, just through the mid range, there was a, a large increase when I was playing with the airbox and stuff as well. So pretty happy with the way it's running at the moment. The tune's all good. We did some stuff for road driving as well. So if I'm towing the trailer on the comp truck, it's sort of tuned for a bit of economy there as well. So if there's that improves, but all in all, motor's healthy, it's done some good stuff and now uh, we can go and have some fun. So make sure to subscribe, check out Young's Performance. So I've come down here, they're, you know, they've done a lot of Harrop stuff. Really good with their Holdens. They're starting to get in some other cars as well. So they have a lot of good gear going on. Awesome dyno, massive setup here as well. So check them out and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. Okay guys, so even though we didn't get a true indication of the power today, I still want to give away a prize pack to the closest answer for that horsepower competition. Now, this guy came along, Marcus Bushk, comes along and goes, 456 horsepower on the dot. Can you believe it? What are the chances, mate? So if you're watching this, send me a message and I'll send out a prize pack to you for that. Otherwise, guys, if you want your own merch, jump onto my website. There'll be a link down below for that, as well as a link to my Patreon page where there's behind the scenes, special access and early access to uploads as well. And um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy. Peace. I've just spent three months doing engine upgrades on my motor here. And I've been told I'm not allowed to turn the key until you press subscribe. Please press subscribe.